On New Year's Eve, Joffrey Fourmile of Ceres made his onslaught on society. He appeared first in Canberra at the Government House Ball, half an hour before midnight. This was a highly formal affair, bursting with color and pageantry, for it was the custom at formals for society to wear the evening dress that had been fashionable the year its clan was founded, or its trademark patented. Thus, the Morses, telephone and telegraph, wore 19th century frock coats, and their women wore Victorian hoop skirts. The Skodas, powder and guns, harked back to the late 18th century, wearing Regency tights and crinolines. Crinoline, crinolines. The daring Pinamundes, rockets and reactors, dating from the 1920s, wore tuxedos, and their women unashamedly revealed legs, arms, and necks, and the decollete of antique worth and Mountbacher gowns. Four Mile of Ceres appeared in evening clothes, very modern and very black. Relieved only by a white sunburst on his shoulder, the trademark of the Ceres clan, with him was Robin Winsbury in a glittering white gown, her slender waist tight in whalebone. The bustle of the gown ac accentuating her long, straight back and graceful step. The black and white contrast was so arresting that an orderly was sent to check the sunburst trademark in the almanac of Peerages and Patents. He returned with the news that it was of the series mining company, organized in 2250 for the exploitation of the mineral resources of Ceres, Palace, and Vesta. The resources had never manifested themselves, and the house of Ceres had gone into eclipse, but had never become extinct. Apparently, it was now being revived. Four Mile the Clown? Yes, the Four Mile Circus. Everybody's talking about him. Is that the same man? Couldn't be. He looks human. Society clustered around Four Mile, curious but wary. Here they come, Foyle muttered to Robin. Relax, they want the light touch. They'll accept anything if it's amusing. Stay tuned. Are you that dreadful man from the Circus Four Mile? Sure you are. Smile. I am, madam. You may touch me. Why, you actually seem proud. Are you proud of your bad taste? The problem today is to have any taste at all. The problem today is to have any taste at all. I think I'm lucky. Lucky, but dreadfully indecent. Indecent, but not dull. And dreadful, but delightful. Why aren't you cavorting now? I'm under the influence, madam. Oh, dear, are you drunk? I'm Lady Shrapnel. When will you be sober again? I'm under your influence, Lady Shrapnel. You wicked young man. Charles! Charles, come here and save Four Mile. I'm ruining him. That's Victor of RCA, Victor. Four Mile, is it? Delighted. What's the entourage of your cost? Tell him the truth. Forty thousand, Victor. Good Lord. A week? A day. A day? What on earth do you want to spend all that money for? The truth. For notoriety, Victor. Ha! Are you serious? I told you he was wicked, Charles. Damned refreshing. Gloss, here a moment. This impudent young man is spending 40000 a day for notoriety, if you please. Skoda of Skoda. Good evening, Formile. I am much interested in this revival of the name. You are perhaps a cadet descendant of the original founding board of Ceres, Inc.? Give him the truth. No, Skoda. It's a title by purchase. I bought the company. I'm an upstart. Good. Toujours les avances. My word, Four Mile, you're frank. Told you he was impudent. Very refreshing. There's a parcel of damned upstarts about, young man, but they don't admit it. Elizabeth, come and meet Four Mile of Ceres. Four Mile, I've been dying to meet you. Lady Elizabeth Citrone. Is it true you travel with a portable college? The light touch here. A portable high school, Lady Elizabeth. But why on earth, Four Mile? Oh, madam, it's so difficult to spend money these days. We have to find the silliest excuses. If only someone would invent a new extravagance. You ought to travel with a portable inventor, Four Mile. I've got one, haven't I, Robin? But he wastes his time on perpetual motion. What I need is a resident spendthrift. Would any of your clans care to lend me a younger son? Welcome, my God, and there's many a clan would pay for the privilege of unloading. Isn't perpetual motion spendthrift enough for you, Four Mile? 
No, it's a shocking waste of money. The whole point of extravagance is to act like a fool and feel like a fool, but enjoy it. Where's the joy in perpetual motion? Is there any extravagance in entropy? Millions for nonsense, but no, not one cent for entropy. My slogan. They laughed in the crowd clustering around Four Mile Grew. They were delighted and amused. He was a new toy. Then it was midnight, and as the great clock told in the new year, the gathering prepared to jaunt with midnight around the world. Come with us to Java, Four Mile. Regis Sheffield's given a marvelous legal party. We're going to play Sober the Judge. Hong Kong, Four Mile. Tokyo, Four Mile. It's raining in Hong Kong. Come to Tokyo and bring your circus. Thank you, no. Shanghai for me, the Soviet Duomo. I promise an extravagant reward to the first one who discovers the deception of my costume. Meet you all in two hours. Ready, Robin? Don't jaunt. Bad manners. Walk out slowly. Languor is chic. Respects to the governor, to the commissioner. There, ladies, bien, bien. Don't forget to tip the attendants. Not him, idiot. That's the lieutenant governor. All right, you made a hit. You're accepted. Now what? Now what we came to Canberra for. Canberra for. I thought we came for the ball. The ball and a man named Forrest. Who's that? Ben Forrest, spaceman off the Vorga. I've got three leads to the man who gave the order to let me die. Three names. A cook in Rome named Poggy. A quack in Shanghai named Oral. And this man, Forrest. This is a combined operation. Society and search. Understand? I understand. We've got two hours to rip Forrest open. Do you know the coordinates of the Aussie cannery, the company town? I don't want any part of your Vorga revenge. I'm searching for my family. This is a combined operation. Every way. He said with such detached savagery that she winced and at once jaunted. When Foyle arrived in his tent in the Four Mile Circus on Jervis Beach, she was already changing into travel clothes. Foyle looked at her. Although he forced her to live in his tent for security reasons, he had never touched her again. Robin caught his glance, stopped changing, and waited. He shook his head. That's all finished. How interesting. You're giving up rape? Get dressed, he said, controlling himself. Tell them they've got two hours to get the camp up to Shanghai. It was 12.30 when Foyle and Robin arrived at the front office of the Aussie Cannery Company town. They applied for identification tags and were greeted by the mayor himself. Happy New Year, he caroled. Happy, happy, happy. Visiting, a pleasure to drive you around. Permit me. He bundled into them into a lush helicopter and took off. Lots of visitors tonight. Ours is a friendly town. Friendliest company town in the world. The plane circled giant buildings. That's our ice palace. Swimming baths on the left. Big dome is the ski jump. Snow all year round. Tropical gardens under the glass roof. Palms, parrots, orchids, fruit. There's our market. Theater. Got our own broadcasting company too. 3D, 5S. Take a look at that football stadium. Two of our boys made All-American this year. Turner at the right Rockney and Otis at left Thorpe. Do tell, Foyle murmured. Yes, sir. We've got everything. Everything. You don't have to jaunt around the world looking for fun. Aussie Cannery brings the world to you. Our town's a little universe. Happiest little universe in the world. Having absentee problems, I see. The mayor refused to falter in his sales pitch. Look down at the streets. See those bikes, motorcycles, cars? We can afford more luxury transportation per capita than any other town on earth. Look at those homes, mansions. Our people are rich and happy. We keep them rich and happy. But do you keep them? What do you mean? Uh, of course we... You can tell us the truth. We're not job prospects. Do you keep them? We can't keep them more than six months, the mayor groaned. It's a hell of a headache. We give them everything, but we can't hold, them, hold on to them. They get the wanderlust and jaunt. Absenteeisms cut our production by 12%. We can't hold on to steady labor. Nobody can. There ought to be a law. Forest, you said, right here. He landed them before a swift shallot set up in an acre of gardens and took off, mumbling to himself. Foyle and Robin stepped before the door of the house, waiting for the monitor to pick them up and announce them. Instead, the door flashed red, and a white skull and crossbones appeared on it. A canned voice spoke. Warning! This residence is man-trapped by the Lethal Defense Corporation of Sweden. R-77-23. You have been legally notified.